everyone, welcome back to my studio and welcome to a new video. Today what I thought I would do is continue working on this canvas. So I worked a bit on this canvas in my last YouTube video and in that video I was demoing a variety of supplies that I have become really infatuated with over the last couple of months. So I made a start on this canvas. I applied some jelly plate prints, botanical prints that I'd done. I also used some new things like these woody um, three-in-one pencils, some Posca paint pens, and just got some marks down. And now I've come back into the studio to work on this. And this is actually a really great canvas to work on because there's nothing really going on on it just yet. And that means that I can really have a lot of freedom as I am working. But one of the things that I have been doing at the moment is keeping a list of processes and techniques that I want to try and explore further. And having this list of techniques, it's almost like a list of prompts, is really helping me to get into the process more quickly, make some quick decisions about what I'm going to do on a canvas and then just follow through with that and see what happens. And at the moment I am in a very transitional and experimental phase of my art when it comes to painting on big canvases. For the past two or three years, my main art practice has been watercolours and sketchbook work, incorporating mixed media, but I haven't really had the space to work large. So this is almost like I am starting all over again. And that is both exciting, but also a little bit scary because I haven't got a process yet that I fully understand. Not that you ever fully understand your process and have it all figured out, but at the moment I don't have those steps that you would often take in a painting where you sort of know where the next, next thing is. So I am looking at designing that process, coming up with a new way of working. And so to do that, I am trying out a variety of different techniques and then reflecting on them and deciding which ones are working, which ones I like, and continuing to use those techniques on another painting and just to build up the knowledge and wisdom through doing that. So I'm adding in some warmer colours to contrast with the cooler colours that are already on the canvas. So this is a mix of burnt sienna, raw umber and a bit of a colour by Golden called Titan Mars Pale. And I use these colours a lot in my work, they're definitely firm favourites, but I haven't yet decided the colour palette for this painting. Sometimes I do pick a colour palette before I start, but this painting in particular, I really want to go with the flow and see what colours emerge on the canvas as I continue to play. So something I've been loving lately is using baby wipes to scrape through paint. And I find that it removes the paint really easily and it creates these interesting lines. And I'm, I'm often using lines that are inspired by trees and things that I can see outside of my windows. And I just really like using the baby wipes to remove the paint. And often when I'm working on a canvas and I'm in these early stages, I will pick a colour and just put it through the canvas in a variety of different spots. So I'm just threading this earthy brown through the canvas. And as I go over some of the areas where the woody crayons were applied, so these blue lines here, you can see because they are water soluble, you can still see that colour coming through in the paint. And that can be a really nice way to get variation in your, in your colours as well. So I have a spray bottle here that's just filled with ordinary water which I can then use to add drips to the canvas if I want to. And I can also just spritz the paint to just help keep it a little bit wet on a day like today when it's actually quite hot. One thing that I didn't mention at the beginning that I do love to do is have a look around and see if there are any marks and things from the initial layer that you really like. And you can sort of see here how 
on this jelly plate print, there was all this line work that looks like reeds or some kind of um, grass or something like that. And you can see how I've already started to replicate that in some of my paint marks. Similarly, I really love these prints here, which were made using seed pods. And so that's something I think I'm going to explore a bit more with my mark making in a minute as I add more paint. You can see here these leaves are actually the leaves that I used for this print up here. So having them there is good in case I want to actually do some drawing or I can reference them. Another thing that I'm doing here is I'm bringing in a colour that I actually used in my printing. So I have these colours that I like pre-mixed up in these containers. And this can be very handy when working on a big canvas and you want to bring the same colour that you used in a previous session into the painting. So because I am working on preserving some of these prints and incorporating them into the final artwork, one way that I can try and integrate these two prints is to bring this colour that I used to do them into this corner so that it all blends together. Well, that's my thinking process at the moment anyway. So I'm just adding this green colour to that top corner. I also love having the pre-mixed colours because it means I can move into the process of painting really quickly. I'm not having to spend a lot of time mixing colours and I can get my paint down and focus on the painting part. So now I'm picking up again something that's already on the canvas, which is this circular shape. But this time I'm applying it with a big brush. So you can see down here some quite thick paint which creates a very different texture to areas that are much thinner which is a nice contrast. So I'm going to bring some more of that sort of thick, heavier, creamy colour across this top area to bring some more of that effect in. So I'm just loading up a nice big three inch brush so that I can bring some of that across. And I have a catalyst tool here where I can scratch into some of this wet paint. So I'm going to turn the canvas upside down now. And as I work, I like to rotate the canvas quite often. Uh, it helps with seeing it with fresh eyes, but also balancing out the painting, um, seeing if you're putting too much of something on one side. So I feel like this area here, I'd like to do something with just to finish off this layer. So that was about 20 minutes of painting and my main objective with this layer was to integrate some of the marks that I already had on the canvas while still staying loose and not too precious about them. So you can see that I have retained some areas from that previous layer. So there are some of these botanical prints showing through. I've almost covered up all of that Posca paint pen, but not quite. Some of the areas have integrated quite nicely, like this corner here is really blending in nicely with the paint. 
There's also this mark making up here that's still from the underneath layer. And I like to work in that way where I don't completely cover everything up when I do a layer. I keep some things from the previous layer um, so that you get that nice complexity in there. So this is a little bit wet now and I'm going to leave it to dry and then come back and I'll, I'll continue working in a similar way for quite a while until I get a nice sort of quality of paint on the canvas and I start to sort of really feel the painting coming through. So this is completely dry now and what I'm going to do in this next layer is work with golden open acrylics which do stay wet for longer and give you a little bit more working time. And this is a new product for me, I have never really used open acrylics before but I wanted to try it out because uh, in the past, during the summer, I've often found that I've taken a break from painting with acrylics because the paints dry so incredibly fast in our climate. So I wanted to try these paints because they're more like oil paints and you get quite a few hours of working time with them. And then they usually dry within a day or two, so they're quite versatile in that way. So you don't have to wait for ages for layers to dry. So once again, I'm taking a colour and bringing it through the canvas. And one thing that I have been focusing on a lot lately, and I really need to focus on it more, is using the whole canvas. Because I have been working small in sketchbooks, it's taking me a while to adjust to the scale of larger work. And I do feel like I need to go even bigger with some of my areas of colour and marks. But I'm beginning that process of pulling the paint through the whole canvas and applying it in different areas. So at this stage, I'm not trying to make sense of the painting. I don't want to get ahead of myself. All I'm really looking at is getting interesting areas onto the canvas and interesting textures and marks. So I'm using things like silicon tools. I'm often smudging areas of paint. So I quite like to go over an area um, sometimes with a rag or a brayer and just mess it up and that really helps me to stay loose so that things aren't getting too precise and perfect and that will enable me to stay in flow with this canvas and not race to the finish line too soon. Often at this stage the painting gets worse before it gets better and I was actually listening to a brilliant podcast recently. It was on the Talking With Painters podcast and the episode is all about risk and it includes several artists and their perspectives on risk. And one of the artists mentioned that to make a really good painting, you have to be prepared to ruin it. And that's really stuck with me as I've got more into this way of working and working with acrylic paints in particular, because you have the power of layering any layer can change dramatically. And so you will go through many stages in a painting. And what I have noticed is that I ruin um, my painting several times before the real beauty of the painting emerges. So keeping that in mind, especially in this middle phase, is really important. So I'll, I'll leave that podcast in the description. It really has helped me. It's a great one to listen to if you are struggling with painting and feeling confident through all the different stages of the creative process. I have yet to really decide what this painting is about. As I progress further into the painting, I will usually pick up on something that is happening in the canvas. I will respond to that and then choose a theme or an idea and that will help me to resolve the painting. And lately that has been usually picking something in relation to nature. So it might be eucalyptus leaves, uh, seed pods, a particular kind of plant or something like that. Trees is a, something that's been coming through a lot. And once I have that idea, it just helps me to bring in marks and patterns and things that relate to that idea and it just gives me something to grab onto to help resolve and finish the painting. But I'm not quite there yet. I imagine there'll be quite a few more layers on this one before I start making some of those key decisions. 
So I really hope that you've enjoyed this session, that it has encouraged you to stay loose and take some risks with your painting. And if you'd like to see where this canvas goes or um, some of my other canvases that I'm working on, let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can put some more videos together that show you um, a little bit more of a deeper insight into my painting process.